And here in the upper right-hand corner of Taldrim Alter, we have our red Zerg player, winner of the last game, tying the setup at four games apiece. It is FXO Lucky. And his opponent in the lower left-hand corner from Team SCV Life, our purple Protoss player, their last hope, Inori. And Inori loves, loves, loves Taldrim Alter in all matchups. Yeah, I does. would think <laughs> it has, especially in PvP, not because he foregates, but because he baits everyone else into foregating. And PvZ, he loves when people go mutilous on this map because he counters that so well. Obviously, this is a map that Zerg loves to go mutilous on. Um, and it looks like he's going to start off with a standard, uh, you know, quick Nexus build on Taldrim. That's right. So, um, you know, I remember when Inori was uh, w was picking this map in PvP situations and just, just like telling people, come on, four, four gate, four just, just do it. You know you want to. And he did this crazy cool three gate build that revolved around a little bit later warp gate time, but you, you actually produce three extra stalkers yep. before the warp gate is finished, and he just shut down every four gate. It was yeah. awesome. I loved watching him do it, and he still does it, man. Just a completely different approach to every single matchup, especially PvP. You know, he completely revolutionizing the matchup in my opinion but now he's been focusing a lot on his pvz recently you saw that he beat symbol at mlg lucky though really really strong in that last game this is going to be extremely hard for him to pull off in a matchup that admittedly he isn't that comfortable with yet and there's a gap in between these two structures here so um i don't know if that's just he plans to put the photon cannon right behind these two but that's still kind of weird positioning off of the forge right yeah, I away. Don't, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I hope he notices that he doesn't have Lings go through there and have him just lose the game because of that, because that would be a shame. And Lucky is uh, pretty predictable at this stage of the game. Going to go for pool first. Of course, needs to clean up this pylon. It's especially important on Taldrum Alter because your third base yep. is actually uh, uh, taken out by Destructible Rock. So either you have to send that drone down to the bottom right here yeah. and take this base that's super exposed and super hard to defend, um, or or you just have to be diligent, knock out the uh, pylon here, then go after the destructible, uh, destructible rocks later on. I actually was watching uh, Slush, another one of my former players, plan this map against, I believe, Oz. And Oz actually opened with a cannon rush simply because he knew if he stopped this base that Slush would have to go all the way to the fourth. And Slush did and he got punished for it because it's just so hard to defend that base. So putting that pile on there early is really, really, you know, it slows down slows down Zergs a lot early. Wow, is he even gonna do the gateway follow-up too to delay oh. a lot? That is insane. So he will be able to cancel this at a loss of 37 resources, but it's certainly- Well uh, worth it. Yeah, doing another 37 resources worth of damage, let's just say that. And now you see Lucky's money at almost 600 when he's going to oh. put down this. Oh, didn't cancel the game. Okay, that was actually kind of bad. That's so a bad mistake. That was 37 minerals worth of damage. I don't know if it was 150 minerals worth of damage no. to put the extra gateway down. So still a gap in the wall here, and we'll see if this gets exploited as time moves along. However, as we can see, the second Nexus is just about to finish up. This hatchery is still just barely uh, barely getting started. And wow, Lucky. he actually managed to sneak the probe back in, and now he's going to see exactly what Lucky is doing. You usually don't get the second view in PvZ against Zerg. And he saw the second queen pop out. He saw no gas on that geyser. I don't think he saw no gas on the I, other I do geyser. think he got close enough to see this. Okay, so. so he knows basically exactly what Lucky is doing, and now he can plan his uh, you know next course of action. I actually don't know if how aggressive Inori is going to want to get on this map. You know, cross spawn against Zerg. It's, it's not usually the best thing in the world to try to just fall in in this position against a Zerg player. And Lucky's being very diligent about taking out these destructible rocks. And believe it or not, we're actually going to see uh, three hatch no gas. Um, not not the cleanest timings, of course, but pretty close for Lucky. So um, this does m flip the matchup on its head just a little bit because that's not usually what you see out of Zerg players specifically on this map because of those destructible rocks and because of, frankly, how good mutas are on this map too. Yeah, usually muta, you know, you usually see them stay on two base simply because getting a mutas on this map is usually a death sentence for Protoss. But uh, Lucky trying for a little bit differently. I don't know if you, you know, this is obviously Inori's former team, FXO. He played with a lot of these players in FXO and before that, Boyu. Ah, uh, there we uh, go. There it is, sealing think, it in there. So I think he realized it, so. Yeah. Um, so maybe they know each other. Maybe it's, you know, just they know each other's styles, but both of them doing slightly unconventional things on this map so far. And the great escape as uh, Probe has stolen some minerals and wants to get the hell out of there, but has uh, the entire army behind him. 
trying to chase him down. So Pro will actually survive, I believe, just barely, but uh, it's not going to be easy. Look at this, though. Lucky individually controlling down one Zergling. I don't know if he's going to try and cut it off now. Looks like he's just going to swing around the side and check the uh, Zelnaga towers. So Yeah, I think he just wants to scout it out a little bit better. And it uh, looks like that Pro whew, does make it home. Those five minerals are going to be the turning point of this game. The battle was no. won on my back when I carried the minerals home. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lucky going for very predictable stuff. Double gassing at 50 supply along with Roach Warren and Evolution Chain. We'll probably see Lair Tech here in just a second as well. Once he gets that 150 resources built back up. And uh, so nothing too out of the ordinary from him quite yet. Uh, it looks like Inori is going to go after a robotics facility. Three gate robotics facility. Actually, there's another one building. There it is. Okay, so four gate robotics facility. Pretty normal stuff out of him. Um, now I'm curious if it's gonna, we're going to see Immortals start to get crowned out or if he's going to try to do something with the Warp Prism. Warp Prism will be a little hard because of simply how much luck he can see right now. He has basically the whole map covered as far as vision. He has all the watchtowers, which is always key on Taldrim, but he actually has good Overlord placement next to his third, so Warp Prism will be hard there. And he has pretty good vision around his uh, main base as well. Oh, and unfortunately his gateways popped units out right in the middle there, so he had to destroy the pylon. Never fun. But he will be able to turn these over into warp gates here in just a second, so... Inori just kind of uh, sharking in the middle of the map, but of course, uh, Lucky smartly preparing with Spore Crawlers. Uh, I mean, Stargates are really popular, or used to be really popular, I should say, on this map, and uh, can still be effective. Yeah, Inori also has a history of going DTs in this situation, so I'm not you're really right. surprised. You know, it's kind of the thing when you're behind, make a Dark Shrine type yeah. thing. Um, so, yeah, that's very smart by Lucky to prepare for something like that. Even though it's not coming, it very well could have around this timing. And uh, a couple more gateways coming up along with the Twilight Council. So it will be a total of six gates and Twilight Council now. We'll see if he goes right to plus two and up to blink, if he's just going to use this as a uh, pathway into a little bit higher tech later on. And uh, we'll see what that response is going to be. Immortals now being started as well. And Inori's going to try and put on some pressure, immediately be repelled by that yeah, amount of pressure. Yeah, cancel the pile. He's like, whatever, you made some units. Now if Inori can survive with any of these units, I think. Oh, oh great force field to get away. Great force field to get away, but does lose two sentries as he's making his way yeah, out. And, you know, thankfully for him, it's only two sentries because he very well could have lost his entire army yes. there. Um, so, yeah, lucky overproducing roaches just a little bit, not too much, and Inori managing to get away with it for a little bit. And we'll see if, uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to start going after the destructible rocks. He's got uh, a couple of immortals, or one immortal out, second and third actually already queued up. Surprised he's not chrono boosting that out if he's got so many uh, resources already allocated into that. But um, that being said, Inori will take out the destructible rocks pretty quickly. If there's anything immortals are good at, at it's killing roaches and killing destructible rocks. Yeah, immortals uh, make quick work of that. So he's going to have to free base, and then we'll see if Lucky's turn to try to do some action. I almost sure he'll try to push sometime in the next minute because he has to know that Inori's trying to get to his third base now. And as I always say, Zergs do not like to see three base Protoss. Nope. Definitely want to try to keep them on two base. But the problem for Lucky right now is that he wants to go for Infestation Pit and a smattering of upgrades. And if he does that, as he's banking resources for just that right now as he takes his fourth, if he does that, Inori is able to safely take his third. And it becomes a completely different situation altogether. Yep. Because then you're looking at like super high tech five base Zerg against the three base huge death ball out of Protoss. And yeah, we, that can go either way, as we saw in the Tier versus well, who, uh, who was playing Symbol that match, yeah. where you know Tier got to the three base, and you know if Symbol had managed to get to that tech, he would have dominated the game. But as it was, Tier struck at exactly the right moment, right before he managed to get all of his uh, tech and upgrades yeah. clicking in. The game on Entomb Valley you're talking Entomb about? Entomb Valley. Yeah. Yes. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, a um, couple more gateways being added along with the Photon Cannon. Just one Immortal <laughs> being sent back to defend. I guess he's immortal, so it doesn't really matter, but... Uh, Matter here in a second as these roaches start trying to push through. They are going to try and pick down one of these gateways and are probably going to get it. It's going to have to be canceled, and it is. And uh, Lucky not going to be able to do too much else there. Yeah, just trying to do a little harass, do the damage he can, but he's not yeah. going to do anything like suicide all the roaches in or anything like that. Hive Tech and Spy are coming on the way, though, so he is going to have Broodlords um, very soon and Inori uh, getting Robo, so it's almost exactly like that uh, Tier versus Symbol series we saw earlier. 
that's true, but I've got to say Lucky's hitting these timings a little bit better than yeah, it, than uh, bit, yeah. than Symbol was. So because uh, Lucky's going to be a little bit more reliably and safely on that high tech uh, because he does already have a fairly good contingent of investors that are hitting the fields and has pretty much dominant map control. Um, and the Colossi are being added in ever so slightly later for Inori. So. We'll see, though, if Anori's still going to be able to put on the pressure that he wants. Chases the roaches away from the Zelnaga Tower. And as we can see, things are all quiet on the western front for now. Yeah, Macro and Minori's just start trying to play catch up a little bit. Eventually, he knows he's going to have to get in there and do some damage right now. He's waiting for the Colossus. Hopefully, the Spinecrawler Force will not be too big by the time he pushes out. And hopefully for Anori, Lucky will not have taken a fifth base by that time. But if uh, Lucky manages to get the Broodlords and he manages to get you know open up his entire tech tree on five base that is a good way for Zergs to deal with the giant death point. and went forward there to pick off a couple of additional units and uh hasn't gotten any roaches yet but uh, has been able to pick off a lot of links there's blink, the big yeah. blink three four roaches going down and uh not a good situation there for lucky who is actually burrowed over at the fourth just in case inori was thinking of taking that inori actually should oh his blink cooldown is down because uh, Lucky knew he had to turn and just try and kill as many forces as possible. Uh, and it looks like he's trying to buy time for a big counterattack. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if those lings manage to get in there. Oh, does he see it? Oh, oh they're getting no. in. There is a Colossus popping out right now, so that'll help in the defense. But, oh, God, this is really, really bad for Inori. Could lose a few workers. Pretty good reaction time for Inori, though. He is able to warp in some units, so he will be able to kill a lot of this, but has to sacrifice a lot of his front uh, line forces uh, to Let's be see, able to One do probe, it. two probe, three probe, four probe, five probes down so far. Yeah, and that's probably right. going to get at least a few more. Nine total. And to 10. Oh, to man, this is doing so much damage. At the same time, though, uh, Inori's doing a pretty good job of harassing Lucky's uh, base. So a little bit of back and forth action here. And these Erglings look like they're going to try and put on some pressure in a second. Yes, they are. They will be able to get the Photon Cannon before it comes up. Looks like Inori was thinking of trying to take two bases at the same time. This entry not in any danger of going down. The Corruptors are now out on the field as well. Five of them, as a matter of fact. And there come the Broodlords. Yeah, and if I know Inori, he's going to say, all right, enough is enough and he's probably just going to try to make something happen because he knows he's getting further and further behind. He lost workers. If he hadn't lost workers, he might have been fine. But he lost a lot of workers right there, and now he is even more behind than he was before. It's only down 20 supply, but 51 to 77 workers is quite a significant deficit. That is true. So uh, Stalker's tried to blink in and do a little bit more damage. Oh, nice job fungling the units on the high ground there and trying to pick those off as well. He is, I will admit, expending a lot yeah, of uh, energy fungals. to take those out. Yeah, yeah. Four fungals to kill five stalkers is not very economical. And looks like he picks up on the units trying to swing in and deny the space on the left-hand side, but there's already a few units there and a photon cannon. Oh, and it looks like Inori's just going to get in right in time. Very well done. Our first few Broodlords have popped up, though five are on the field, and as we can see, that spine crawler Forest, as you say, is getting wow. much, oh, geez, much I didn't bigger. Oh, it was that much. Yeah, Lucky's still banking 2K. He can afford to make a lot more. Um, I, I really don't want to see Lucky, you know, throw the roaches away as much as he can. You know, they are pretty easily replaceable, but at the same time, when Zerg loses a lot of units at once to a Protoss, that's Protoss a sing signal to go in because they have to rally from so many different directions, and that's what we saw Tier do early in the series. You cut off the rally point, you know, that's very, very devastating for Zerg. You really cannot afford to lose so much supply at one time. More spine crawlers coming up to aid in the defense. A few stops playing to the low oh, this ground. Is so annoying by Inori just staying up there. This reminds me a lot of the Kulos Ravine on top of oh the my natural. god, yeah. I mean, he's basically doing that right now, and Lucky has to send these units all the way around all the time. But yeah, he's actually stopping that gas from being used, and one gas is pretty significant in ZVP, um, and he keeps picking off workers. Um, he's doing a very good job on harassing that base. And Fleet Beacons coming up now with the addition of Void Rays making their uh, making their way in. So um, Spinecrawler Forest is up. Very powerful army sitting here for Lucky. And we're kind of at a standstill now because Inori is, is I mean, he can continue to harass, pick off creep tumors, things like that. But he can't assault that force, especially that defensive position quite yet. Um, he's going to need the mothership. He's going to need the air forces to make that happen. He's also going to need the fifth base soon because he's yes. getting to the point where he's about to mine out his if he hasn't already um, same thing with lucky um, yeah it's getting very very close so he's gonna have to you know he's gonna have to kill that zergling that's bro and he's gonna have to take a fifth very very soon and uh, looks like he will be able to pick off the spine crawler on the low ground without damage him make it pinned by a fungal though 
Very good fungal growth. Hits a lot oh, of wow, those stalkers. Going to kill all of those stalkers. Great fungals by Lucky and Nori. It was a little bit of a mental mistake there, but very, very nice fungals by Lucky to clean those up. And it looks like he'll be able to replace those forces with a bunch of Archons here in a second. Actually, just making in some more stalkers for now, not waiting on the uh, Templar Archives. At the same time, though, wow! And Nori is really far forward with this Into force. The Alderim Nook he goes with Stalker's Colossus is actually pretty good. A little bit of a miscontrol over there with the Zealots, but I think he'll actually just decide to kill that base and then back off. So, Mothership is on the way now, and what a fitting end to this set is that we yeah. have a game that's going up to Mothership, a really long PVZ so far, and uh, honestly, it's pretty even at this point. It looks like Lucky's just trying to play that brand as he loses a base there that's just super defensive. He just wants uh, in, uh, an unbeatable force, just something that there's no way you could ever produce an army that could kill it. And he's getting close to that point. He's going to have 18 Broodlords here in a second. Yeah, so the, the most important things in late game PvZ, one is the upgrades. So let's check out the upgrades. Uh, I think the Broodlords are unupgraded right now. His ground upgrades are pretty good, although I don't know if I'm able to find one. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for a Zergling, a Roach, anything. So. Um, but oh, there's, uh, there's a, roach. a Roach. So he has three attack and no carapace. That's actually kind of big. Um, and look at Inori's upgrades. Inori is up to... 3-1, and he's getting his his second armor upgrade as well. Um, Lucky needs to start making some upgrades, or his army is going to be a lot less effective. And then, obviously, Mothership and Storm against Broodlords, as everyone knows, is really, really good. Getting both of those now. That's um, right. We're getting to the point where I wouldn't be surprised to see some air upgrades and hopefully some uh, range attack or some uh, carapace upgrades for uh, Lucky. And looks like Inori is once again going to try and be very, very annoying here. Could start blinking back a couple of the stalkers he wants, or just blink directly onto the base and kill it. Is yeah, what his that plan is, is more than annoying. He has just taken out that base, and now Lucky only is down to what one and a half mining bases. Yep, something like that. So uh, Lucky now really has to do a bit of catch-up work in that regard. He still, I believe, has the stronger frontline force yes, for now. For now. But with those uh, continued void rays being added in, and with the mothership. The Mothership, the Archons, the War Prisms now with speed. Inori is going to be everywhere on the map. Oh, I love that base in the top left by Inori. That is not going to get found almost ever by Lucky. He has no reason to go up there now that he doesn't have that base anymore. That probably will not get scouted for quite some time. So, Lucky now with wow. his devastating 18 fleet. lords. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, all right. Well, he's going to roll his way through. And it looks like he decides that he has had enough. And is he going to engage this force straight up? And Nori kind of trying to run out of the way. Doesn't want to fight quite yet. And uh, can't really counterattack at the moment because there is still that huge spine crawler wall back up at home. Even a Nidus network done, but we haven't seen a Nidus form quite yet. Yeah, I don't think Nori can fight this without Vortex. That's just too many Broodlords. And I think he knows it too. He is just going to go straight up trade. And let's see here now. I don't even know where that mothership is at. I'll have to. I think it's on the third base. Let's see here. You think it's on the third base? Nope. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll search for it in a second because we actually do have uh, Inori going ahead and moving ahead. But I want to see. Hold on. I'm, I am going to check around for it. There it is. There okay. It is. It's floating up towards the top left hand corner, so it'll be able to recall the army there if the time comes. Yeah, that's actually very smart. I wouldn't be surprised to try if he puts that mothership in a position where he can recall into another big part of Lucky's base. Right now, he's just diverting the army away from his base. Very, very smart, doing the damage he can while he just kind of stalls out Lucky's army. Because, as we know, Broodlords are incredibly slow, and they can't reinforce. And actually, as those stalkers are picking away at Lucky's base, he manages to kill that hatchery. That'll actually be pretty big. Okay, there finally, we go. there's some response. Okay, because that would have been huge if uh, Inori managed to kill that hatchery. All right. Well, that's a good number of Infestors, Corruptors, and Broodlords up uh, for Lucky. And we're going to see if that can be enough to take out his opponent's forces. So, Oh, wow. Trying to pick up the planes there. Yeah. Kind of a cute decision there. But he will be able to transfuse those up if he so desires. That is still, an, like, that's a huge force. I don't know if Inori can fight an army that big. Now let's see here. It's still just 44 workers killed at 22. Looks like a couple of DTs were warped in there as well. But another base went down. So now we have big fight in the middle. Great Fungal Gross pinning down a lot of Stalkers, but he recalls all of his forces out, and Inori keeps most of his forces alive. Really well done. That is a great move. It's going to be a little wasted simply because Lucky never rebuilt that base. Inori thought he was going to be clever and then re-kill it. 
but it's not there. So now he doesn't have anything. It looks like he, you know, he just doesn't have anything to do. He can't re-kill a base that isn't there. But these Broodlords are so slow, they're just not able to get across the map. So uh, Lucky has a big decision to make. Oh, and he sees some probes heading up to the top left. Maybe that'll send a little trigger in his mind to, to know to check up there in a bit. Spine crawlers are trying oh, to run wow. away. Oh, he moved all of the spine crawlers. Spine crawler force relocated in the main. Oh, he's going to go hardcore turtle. But you can't really turtle against Colossus stalkers like this. I wonder if even Lucky has enough to deal with that back home. Well, let's see. Mothership is sitting just out of range for now. So uh, these Brutters, unfortunately, flying over a huge group of uh, those uh, photon cannons are ish enough for another recall uh, to be able to bring forces back home if the situation calls for it. But Lucky's just losing everything over it as natural. Yeah, I don't like this decision by Lucky. He should be trying to defend his base. He thinks he can just win the game with this force. But against a Mothership, I really think you're going to have to remake some of this, even with that many Corruptors. And the Sucker's not being controlled the best in the world, I have to say, for Inori. He's letting yeah. a lot of those die, and he is indeed going to lose the space. It's a staggering amount of damage output there from those Broodlings. Yeah, that's so many Broodlings. The Broodlings are upgraded as well, I think, at this point. Yes, yeah, 0-2 upgrades. Yeah, so... That's a lot of damage, but at the same time... You know, oh, and he killed, he sniped the Mothership over the top here as well, so... Uh, he was able to send those Corruptors off to the side, so the Mothership is actually down. Oh, no, oh, no it's it not, right no, there. it he actually flew it, out of the way. It away. Now it's gonna die. <laughs> Unless he manages to... Oh, wow! Whoa! All right, Vortex is and keeps it alive, but only 50 energy now on the Mothership, and he's not going to be able to get in there to take out the forces that were inside of that Vortex. I'm trying to figure out where Nori's 145 supply is, because that's not it. Where is the rest of his army right now? Does he have, like, okay, he has some stalkers back at home. 53 of it is, of course, in workers at the moment. He's mining off of, let's see, one basis. Changeling's just kind of sitting around. Uh, one and a half. All right, so now the mothership looks like it's going down, but... Here we have uh, Lucky losing the rest of his base at home. 35 kills apiece on those Colossi. Looks like they are finally going to get chased down here in a second. And oh, the mothership gets blown up by the Corruptors that were in pursuit. So Lucky still has a staggeringly powerful force. There's not actually a way for Inori to engage that straight up yet. Yeah, Inori now losing the mothership. He has to rebuild it quick because that's still so many Broodlords and so many Corruptors. Yep, and there goes the Void Ray, so Lucky's down to just one base, um, and he does have enough resources to start another hatchery if he wants to. He'll probably have to take it here and then mine the rest of this out and take another hatchery somewhere else, but still, what is uh, what is Inori going to do? He's trying to make another mothership for now. Where's it being produced? Okay, out of the natural. Yeah, and his army is actually bigger than Lucky's, but still, I would say Lucky has the scarier army right now with all of those Broodlords and the Corruptors. That is... As any Protoss player knows, you see that, that is scary stuff. He is down to four Infestors, which is really not that many, you know, but still, Blink Stalkers and only one Colossus is not enough to deal with all those Broodlords. And let's see here, looks like the Corruptors are actually heading back home as, uh, oh, so nice, Inori just continuing to run around the map, and Storm, has he killed all the workers? No, there are still six drones up, looks like they're sitting inside of the main for now. Yeah. So here, Lucky is now, he's just going to try to kill Inori's buildings, but if it comes down to a base race, oh wow, he's going to get a lot of the Overseers and maybe the Corruptors. Corruptors trying to get out of there, but a few forces picked off, and uh, Bruthling's starting to siege up this base, though. We need to see a couple more fires uh, out of Lucky. Can't really delay for too much longer, but yet he can't let his base get killed either. Lucky is being really indecisive. He needs to figure out what he wants to do. Does he want to attack and try to kill off Inori's buildings, or does he want to defend his base? He can't do both, and he's trying to do both. If he lets that mothership get up again, that would be absolutely devastating. Yeah, I, I can't believe he needed to do something. He has literally gone back and forth with these Broodlords, not doing Doing anything. He needed to camp and try to retake bases, or he needed to attack. Instead, he's cleaning up the army, then he's sending it all the way across the map to try to attack, and he's like, oh no, there's stalkers in my base again, I gotta send all of these broodlords back, and he can't do that. He doesn't have lings, he's just not a ling army. You can't just keep sending these bases, you know, these units back and forth all the time. And Lucky trying to keep anything alive that he can. He does have drones across the map so he can rebuild a hatchery if he absolutely has to. But, but he, he doesn't, doesn't have enough hive. money anymore. He only has 280 because he just spent six... He just built six, six lings. lings! Why did he do that? And now, now he cannot build a hatchery. He would have had enough had he mined off of this mineral patch, but now that's it! 
He does not have the ability to make another hatchery, so Lucky will not be building anything for the rest of this game. Well, he's revealed, so now uh, all Inori has to do is send a DT out to each of the locations he sees, a, he sees a structure, and he should be able to win. And those would actually die if not for the Overlords, because he doesn't have anything to generate creep up there. Oh my god, okay. So and Lucky's in a really tough spot now. Kind of the fate of the team rests on him right now, and the lings that were just constructed are obliterated. Oh god! I don't. Lucky just seems like he's so out of his element right now, and Inori has all the power. Even if he loses his army, he can remake it, and Lucky can't. All right. Well, the Broodlords are running through the middle. He's split off some of the Broodlords so that he can keep a force back at home, but now he's voluntarily split his forces in half, where he might have won the engagement if he had everything in the same place. Um, because out of necessity, because his structures were all taken out, he has to keep some stuff uh, some stuff away and may just get this force straight up killed by what uh, Inori has sitting yeah, around. Yeah, he has to be cognizant of DTs because he can't deal with it unless he keeps enough there in order to protect his buildings. And Nori knows it too, he has DTs over there. Um, so he's just waiting, 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 waiting. Now he's getting shield upgrades and he's like, alright, I'm gonna wait until there's an engagement that actually benefits me and then, you know, Lucky's going to be in a lot of trouble if the Vortex gets in the picture-perfect spot. That's right, and uh, we could see another big old recall as well if uh, worst comes to absolute worst, and I actually don't know where the mothership is at yeah, once again. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I wonder. So, Oh, no! Lucky's wow, just going to GG's! And that's it! Oh, oh! What an anticlimactic end to the set wow. there! And unfortunately, FXO goes down. TSL knocks out FXO 5-4. to four.